to be one of the biggest reasons why most retail traders get burnt in the financial markets. And it is because they fail to understand or to grasp the simple concept about how markets actually move, right? Or what I like to call the invisible hand that actually guides the financial markets. It's an invisible hand because a lot of retail traders actually fail to actually spot or to I see whenever it's about to do what it's about to guide the markets and that is essentially why I call it the invisible hand so what am I talking about exactly right I'm talking about sentiment so in the last video that I did we looked at that at this AUD NZD position or buy position and price was essentially around here and then obviously you can see it has went up and currently it's, it's pulling back right but in that video specifically I spoke about risk sentiment right in today's video I'm going to speak about market sentiment because I know that it, it people just throw around this term as an umbrella term that sentiment 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 but in my opinion there's a difference between the two we have risk sentiment then we have market sentiment and if you are able to identify the difference between the two then it can obviously uh, transform your trading in an exponential way right because like I said it's an invisible hand so if it's if it is an invisible hand then you need to be able to see the subtle changes that the market presents before we see that shift or before the hand actually steps in to try and control the markets or guide the markets right so in this AUD NZD trade last in the last video I looked at the geopolitical risk especially or specifically Middle East tensions right and I said if they escalate then obviously it's gonna weaken the New Zealand dollar more than the Australian dollar even even if both are what are commodity currencies and they do not perform well whenever we are, we are in a what in a high volatility environment or a high volatility risk environment or in a risk off environment that is with regards to risk sentiment risk on risk off that is not what I'm going to talk about in this video what I am going to talk about in this video obviously I'll start with this actual uh, position that 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 I that I shared in the last video to try and explain what I'm what I'm what I'm really trying to get at here right so what I'm talking about in essence is market sentiment risk sentiment is with regards to risk on risk off but market sentiment it is what is currently happening right now that is what market sentiment is and the primary purpose of us actually reading articles is to gauge the current market sentiment not the risk sentiment we get that by looking at volatility looking at how different asset classes are behaving but in terms of market sentiment which is also part of the invisible hand that controls the market we actually need to do what we actually need to read articles for us to have an idea of what type of sentiment is currently driving the market right why do i say this or why do i make so much emphasis on this because a lot of retail traders are getting burned because they they are not paying attention to what to a shift in sentiment not a shift in the bigger picture not a shift in the macro picture but a shift in sentiment but there's also a caveat because in the market sentiment there's also what a varying degree we can have market sentiment that is short term or we can have market sentiment that could potentially be long term because it is going to impact what the macro picture that is how we differentiate the two when it comes to market sentiment if market sentiment does not impact the macro picture or change the macro picture then we expect it to be short-lived but if it does change or impact the macro picture essentially what am i talking about the the future decisions that the central bank will make then in that case we do what we expect it to have a longer term impact right or for it to be sustained for a longer period so starting off with what we had today essentially this china reopened today after their long holiday so metals actually slammed why did metals actually fall by metals we mean copper iron ore so on and so forth why did why did they fall because china failed to deliver fresh stimulus measures so there were expectations that china was going to deliver more stimulus but that was not the case so what does that mean that is negative sentiment for china right if it's negative for sentiment for china or the chinese uh, currency or chinese indices or stock market then what does that mean that also means what it's going to be negative for what for all these other commodity commodities these metals iron ore to be specific why iron ore because china is a biggest buyer of iron ore so if you just i'm not going to read the whole article but we're just going to read the first line here our first paragraph iron ore slumped from a five-month high and base metals fell 
after a hotly anticipated briefing by China's top economic planner ended without new pledges to boost government spending. Why is this important? Because who is who is one of the biggest exporters of iron ore? Australia. So if iron ore prices are falling because of negative sentiment from China, then that is going to what? Also going to negatively impact the Australian dollar, right? But then is that going to change the macro picture of the Australian dollar? That is the question. For the fact that China is not performing well and iron ore prices are falling, if it gets severe, maybe. But then if we then now look at what the meeting minutes from the Reserve Bank of Australia's uh, meeting interest rate decision, if we look at the meeting minutes that we actually got today, what, what do they tell us? They say Australia's central bank will hold interest rates at the current 12-year high until it's confident that inflation is moving sustainably towards target. Minutes of the last board meeting showed, suggesting policy easing still remains some way off. So this is the macro picture. This is the sentiment. And that is why we are actually seeing what? We are actually seeing this sort of move where there's weakening of the Australian dollar. Why? Because sentiment is currently weakening the Australian dollar, even though the bigger picture has not changed, especially if we're looking at AUD against New Zealand dollar, the bigger picture has not changed. We're still bearish on the New Zealand dollar. We're still bullish on the Australian dollar. Nothing has changed in terms of the, of the bigger picture, in terms of the central bank divergence, right? But sentiment, which is the invisible hand, to be specific, not just sentiment, but market sentiment, because remember what I said, we have risk sentiment and we have market sentiment. Market sentiment currently is bearish for what? For the Australian dollar. Because of what? Because of bearish uh, bearish uh, market sentiment uh, in China, right? So that is, this is the first thing that you need to understand. In this type of scenario or situation, this sort of market sentiment or bearish sentiment for the Australian dollar I anticipated or expected to be short-lived because it is not impacting what the future decisions of the Reserve Bank of Australia. Yes, it might maybe feed into inflation in the near future, so on and so forth, but currently it does not change the macro picture. So that is why I am not panicking as the Australian dollar is currently pulling back. But if the story develops further and I see further evidence that maybe the Australian dollar can weaken further, then I might maybe reconsider. But for now, this is just what? short term in terms of market sentiment. Now, we are also going to look at an example of short term together with long term, right? So that, because remember I said when, when it comes to market sentiment, it can, it can be short lived or it could potentially be have a long a longer impact or it can be a longer in terms of duration, right? So this is just the example of what? Of short term. Then, now we are going to look at an example of short term together with an example of long term. But then here's what I want us to do, right? Uh, let us actually switch over uh, to this uh, to this currency that I'm that I'm looking for. Uh, so GBP NZD, right? Then let us switch back to our sentiment here. So now let us switch over to this chart. Oh, sorry, not to this chart, to this sort of tab. So. When it comes to also analyzing market sentiment from a scope of long term and a scope of short term impact, remember what I said. How do you how do you differentiate the two? It will be short term if it's not going to impact or change the macro picture or change the central bank's decision moving forward. But it will have a long lasting impact if it's going to what impact the central bank's decision or potentially change the macro picture. So in this example that I'm giving to you right now, we have two that are actually what long term and then still short term, just like what we're having in China uh, from China to today, right? So let's start with the the longer term one. So this was last week, Ishiba's surprise warning to BOJ casts doubt on hike in 2024 right so let us actually close this other tab uh, it actually costs what doubt on hikes when in 2024 right so that is very important for us to understand right so if that is the case if it is costing doubts on hikes in 2024 then that means what that could potentially have a longer term impact because what what did what what did Ishiba actually say right so let's 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 read this article let's actually read this article right so let's read the first paragraph and see if we get something out of it so 
Ishiba, so the new Japanese Prime Minister, Ishiba's unexpected warning against raising interest rates is pushing back expectations of another central bank move this year and increasing doubts about his communications, right? Ishiba triggered a sharp yen slide on Wednesday, this was last week, after he said Japan wasn't ready for higher borrowing costs for the time being. In an unusually direct remark from a prime minister following his meeting with the Bank of Japan governor, uh, Ueda, right? So by just reading these, uh, these, these two paragraphs, you get a sense that, okay, in this specific example, this is a what? This is a market sentiment event, but that has a longer term impact because it's going to impact what? The decision that the central bank, which in this, in this, to be specific, the decision that the Bank of Japan is going to take moving forward in terms of adjusting their monetary policy because this is what the Prime Minister is saying, right? So now, in this regard, you wouldn't expect the weakness of the Japanese yen to be short-lived unless, obviously, markets, not market, but risk sentiment actually steps in and then we see the Japanese yen strengthening because of a safe haven demand, right? But if that is not the case, then based on market sentiment, we would not expect the Japanese yen to strengthen because the actual sentiment is longer term. It has an actual direct impact on what? On the Bank of Japan interest rate decision or the next Bank of Japan's interest rate decision, right? This is an example of longer term duration market sentiment, right? This is not, this is not short term. Then on this side, we have short term. This was last week as well. And this, this is the headline. Pound drops most since 2022 against Euro as Bank of England eyes faster cuts. This is very important, right? So the pound posted the biggest one day slide against the Euro since late 2022 after Governor Andrew Bailey suggested the Bank of, J the Bank of England could take a more aggressive approach to lowering interest rates. Let us read further, right? Because if you just take it at face value like that, you might say it's probably the same thing as what we have we had on the left side. No. Sterling slumped um against the Euro Central Bank uh provided okay, this is what this is what they said. Uh after after Bailey said the central bank could become a bit more aggressive and a bit more activist in its approach to cutting rates provided inflation stayed subdued. I, I, I would like you to read that. The central bank could become a bit more aggressive and a bit more activist in its approach to cutting rates, provided inflation stayed subdued. Is that not what you would expect? Obviously, if inflation stays subdued or inflation continues to fall, then you would expect the central bank to deliver out more aggressive interest rate cuts. So this was short-term market sentiment because it, it had a dovish tone because he, he he sort of he did not push back against aggressive interest rate cut. He was for against uh, he was for interest rate cuts or he spoke for aggressive interest rate cuts if inflation stayed subdued or provided that inflation stayed subdued. That is what you would expect, right? So the the tone or the message was dovish but will it have an impact in the future? No, because it did not change anything in terms of the macro picture. Inflation did not go up after that after that comment or inflation did not fall after that comment. Unemployment did not go up after these dovish comments. Why am I saying this? Yes, yes, it's, it's you might say, but then it doesn't make sense. Obviously, it wouldn't fall because of the comment. But what I'm trying to say is that you need to be able to differentiate between the short term market sentiment and market sentiment that could potentially have a longer term impact. Because if what he had said here was, we are now going to start cutting interest rates more aggressively. And he did not say provided inflation stayed subdued. If it did not, if he, if he had excluded that provided inflation stayed subdued, then this would be what a potential longer term uh, market sentiment uh, sort of move. Because he, what he's saying is that we are now going to be more aggressive, which means that based on current Based on current market conditions, based on current data, then we would we are going to be what more aggressive. But that is not what he said. He said provided inflation stays subdued. So as long as inflation is not staying subdued, then we wouldn't expect him to do what to deliver more aggressive interest rate cuts. Why am I saying this to you? Because it is very important for you to understand the shift in sentiment. Because you might have gotten burned when that happened. Because this is what happened at that time. 
Bank of this, this is when we had those those dovish comments. What happened? GBP NZD actually fell. But for me, because I understood that this is market sentiment, but it has a what a shorter term impact compared to like the 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 the, the BOJ one that we just looked at. In this regard, I'm going to fade any weakness of the pound. So any weakness of the pound, I'm going to look to buy, obviously, against another economy where I'm ex exceptionally dovish on. And obviously, that is why I went with GBP NZD because I've been singing up, I've been singing the very same tune with the New Zealand economy. I am bearish on the New Zealand economy. So when this happened, this is a four hour candle. When this happened, what did I do? I bought GBP NZD because I understood that it has not changed the bigger picture. And because he said, provided inflation stays subdued, he did not say we are going to lower interest rates or more aggressively. He did not only say that, but he said that together with what provided inflation stays subdued, right? So this is what I wanted to share because this has actually burned a lot of retail traders because they are not clear, they, or they do not have a clear understanding of market sentiment and the varying degrees of market sentiment, number one. Number two, they cannot differentiate between market sentiment as well as risk sentiment. Yes, the two play hand in hand, but for the purpose of this video, because the, lo the, 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 the last video that I did, we looked at risk sentiment. For the purpose of this video, I wanted to go over what? Market sentiment, because this is very, 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 very important, right? And as always, guys, please like the video. If you found value from this video, do subscribe. But most importantly, share the video with someone who might benefit from this, especially if you were not also aware of the difference in market sentiment. If you, if this was a light bulb moment for you and it's something that you're going to implement moving forward in your trading, then definitely share it with someone else. Cause if you found it valuable, then probably there is someone else who might need it as well, or who might also what find it valuable as well. Right? So with that being said, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Like the video, like I said, and share the video if you found value. And obviously, do not forget to subscribe, guys. Cheers.